Hey everybody, this is Mac Daddy Mike, and this is a how-to video on getting uh, Star Wars Jedi Knight and Mysteries of the Sith running off of your downloaded Steam purchase, uh, which unfortunately was released basically broken and unplayable the way that it was. Uh, but people have found ways to circumvent uh, the Steam install settings to get these games running on modern systems. Uh, I take no credit for any of these. I found this all online. I'm just kind of putting it into a easy-to-find place to... So get things working for other people. Uh, and while this all worked for me fairly easily without any fight, it is not guaranteed to work for you depending on your system settings or your hardware setup. Um, but I've provided links in the description to all the original pages where I found this info in case you need more details or alternative methods. <clears throat> Uh, so what we're going to do is first we're going to go into our install area for our game. In this case, I'm going to be showing you Mysteries of the Sith as opposed to Jedi Knight. Uh, but you'll find that under your default Steam folder, your Steam apps, common, then the game title, and this is what you should see here. First thing we're going to do is there's this application here called Sith, and for Jedi Knight, I believe it is called Jedi. And this is the launcher application. So it... It's supposed to launch a, a little launcher that gives you options such as playing the game, troubleshooting, uh, and such like that. That came with the original install of the game, but it does not work on modern systems. And if you launch the game through Steam, it will try to launch Sith first instead of the main game. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete it. We do not need it whatsoever. Uh, and we're going to direct our attention to this here, our JKM, uh, which is what launches the game. Or I believe it's just called JK in the Jedi Knight folder. We're going to go into Properties. First thing that we need to do is to set our compatibility. Uh, run this program in compatibility mode for Windows XP with Service Pack 3. Um, if Service Pack 3 doesn't work for you, try it with Windows XP Service Pack 2. I've heard that work for other people. Uh, but we're going to make sure that our compatibility setting is set there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a shortcut and we're going to move it to the desktop or, or elsewhere. Um, I already have one on the desktop here, so we're just going to look at that. You go into Properties, first things first, once again, Compatibility, make sure it's set for the same compatibility as the original file, otherwise it's not going to run too well. And we're going to go into the shortcut info and specifically this target line. Uh, so when you enter here, it should end with this little jkm.exe with the quotation marks. After that, we're going to enter one space and then short dash window GUI, another space, and then dash display config. Uh, and we're going to make sure that that's added to the end of our target path. And we're going to click OK. Now, I've, I've read that there's another way to circumvent this through Steam so that you can actually launch it through Steam. And that's by going into your library, uh, going into your Star Wars Jedi Knight or Mysteries of the Sith, going into Properties. Uh, and there's a Set Launch Options little setting here. Uh, and you can enter in the same information that we added to the target path. So make sure you start with a space first, then the dash, window GUI, another space, dash, display config. This method actually did not work for me. Um, it still does, is a little finicky launching through Steam, uh, but it has worked for other people, so it might work for you, and it can skip all of this shortcut stuff. Uh, but we're going to get out of there, and we're going to launch the game. Now it's going to originally launch in this tiny kind of crappy window. There's, I can't find a way around that. Um, but first things first, we're going to go into Setup and into Display and Advanced Settings here. Uh, yours will probably default to having this primary display driver set up. You do not want that. This game just does not run very well uh, aside from window display on modern machines. So we're going to select uh, Dib Section Window Display and you should have uh, a setting here for either render droid or render bot, some kind of render setting here. Uh, make sure that's selected. We don't need to change anything else here. We're just going to click OK. Uh, here we select our display resolution. I'm going to go to 1280 by 1024. Uh, you will, it'll be unlikely that you'll be able to fill the whole screen, uh, especially if you're running a modern rig, but that's the price we pay to play a game from 1998 or whatever <laughs> this was released. Uh, you want to make sure that Enable 3D Acceleration is unchecked, otherwise the game will not work. And this is a big one here. Uh, you're going to need to turn off this back buffer in system memory, otherwise it's going to screw with your visuals. 
And for some reason, every time you launch the game, this is defaulted to check. So every time you launch the game, you have to make sure that you remember to go into your display options and turn this off. Otherwise, your game will probably crash, and if it does run, it'll look like garbage. You don't want that. Uh, but we can have all that set now. We can hit OK. Uh, oh, it actually remember my sound settings. I've noticed that sometimes the game will completely forget your sound settings every time you launch it. Uh, I don't know why, but that's another thing that just sometimes you'll need to uh, fix every time you launch the game. But we're going to go into single player, we're going to start a new game. For whatever reason, the menu and any cutscenes were shown in this tiny window, but as you're about to see, when we get into the game, it all works pretty reasonably well. Um, and I can actually play. Now, you may notice that there is music playing in my version. If you purchase this game through Steam, it will not come with music. Uh, I guess on the original disc, all of the sound assets were on the disc, and when they ported it for Steam, they didn't bother ripping any of the music from the disc. Uh, so, uh, there is a fix online. Some dedicated fans have found a way to input the music back in, and it, it works perfectly fine. It's hassle-free. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description or maybe put in an annotation uh, here that you can click on and get music working for your game as well. Uh, out of curiosity, I actually have the original game disc and I put it in my system hoping to, hoping that it would read the music files off of the disc even if I was running it through the Steam version. And uh, oddly enough, what happened was that the game would not launch because it would ask me to insert the Mysteries of the Sith disc when the disc was already in in my computer. So for some reason the game identified that it needed to check for the disk but was not able to read the disk whereas if I just had the disk completely out of the machine the game would run fine. Weird little glitch. I know I just wanted to share that. Uh, but hopefully this will get the game running on your system. Uh, it's an amazing game. I hope that more people get to appreciate it uh, and sorry about LucasArts dissolving and probably never fixing this issue on Steam themselves. Um, but I hope you have some fun, I hope everything works out, and this is Mac Daddy Mike signing off.